dan ibu-ibu rekan sejawat, adik-adik koas yang saya hormati. Pada kesempatan kali ini kita akan mendengarkan uh, special lecture by Prof. Osama uh, Swaki dari Mesir. Swaki. Oke. Oke. Sorry about that. Okay. Let me introduce myself. My name is Indah Ramawati. I will be master ceremony for this event. And uh, it is my pleasure to welcome you here in this morning. I hope you already enjoy our cafe break that I will be brief, uh, prepared. And I would like to thank you for joining us today for this special event. Uh, first of all, let's say thanks to Allah who has been giving us guidance, happiness, healthy, and mercy so we can attend and participate in this event without any obstacles. In this great morning, the Indonesian Association of Obstetricians and Gynecologists Yogyakarta, Poki Jogja, uh, present the Siang Clinic event with the title Hysteroscopy from A to Z. We will get more information about hysteroscopy and discuss about it uh, from A to Z from our special guest, Professor Osama. On this special event, we have several agendas, so allow me to read several sequences of our agenda. We will start with opening remark and then follow it with the key presentation and discussions and then product presentations and continue with the video sessions after lunch break. To start this event, I would like to invite Dr. 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 Diah Rumekti, Hadiati Master of Science, Specialist Obstetri and Gynecology Consultant, to open uh, this event. Kepada Dr. Diah, waktu dan tempat, saya persilahkan. Giving applause. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi. Ya, selamat pagi semuanya. Uh, I would first of all I would like to thank Professor Osama Sauki. <laughs> This is your second visit here, so many thanks for your um, comings. Uh, pagi ini Pogi Jogja mengadakan kuliah siang klinik uh, dengan tambahan histeroskopi A to Z. Uh, kami pernah satu kali mendengar, we already hear your presentation previously, and we want to share the very special presentation for Prof. Osama to all of uh, you. Yeah. Jadi, uh, beberapa bulan yang lalu kami juga sudah ketamuan profesor, dan uh, kuliahnya sangat menarik, sehingga uh, ingin sekali berbagi dengan kuliahnya seberapa uh, jauh pikiran-pikirannya untuk merubah praktek obstetri dan ginekologi dan uh, banyak sekali yang sesuai atau kita setuju dengan pemikiran-pemikirannya sehingga mungkin dengan tambahan pengetahuan ini nanti bisa uh, merubah cara pandang kita tentang ilmu obstetri dan ginekologi mudah-mudahan Uh, apa tambahan hari ini bisa bermanfaat untuk uh, kita semua ya so uh, the presentation the presentation surely will make a better for women health <laughs> yeah. uh, sehingga uh, sangat bagus untuk didengarkan sampai akhir nanti mudah-mudahan bermanfaat uh, selamat datang dan selamat menambah pengetahuan semoga bermanfaat ya yeah. Terima kasih. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih kepada Dr. Dia. Uh, so we moving right along. It is now my pleasure to introduce our special guest, Professor Osama. He is the professor in the Department of Obstetric and Gynecology from Cairo University. His expertise in the field of infertility and endoscopy with the several inventions and also design several instruments related to endoscopy. And the sessions we will have Dr. Nur Hadi Rahman as a moderator to uh, lead the sessions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please join in welcoming Professor Osama and Dr. Adi.
Ya, thank you Dr. Endah. Dr. Dia yang saya hormati. Uh, Prof. Osama and uh, dokter-dokter uh, perwakilan dari Pogi Jogja dan Rumah Sakit Jejaring dan kemudian uh, residen dan juga uh, adik-adik dokter muda uh, selamat datang di acara uh, Pogi Jogja yang yang memang waktunya bertepatan dengan hari kerja tapi karena memang Uh, Prof. Osama ini adalah satu rangkaian kegiatan dari Jakarta, kemudian Semarang, kemudian terakhir kemarin di uh, Universitas Udayana, Bali, dan ini terakhir sekarang di sini, kemudian nanti kembali Jakarta akan kemudian pulang. Nah ini mudah-mudahan histeroskopi A to Z ini benar-benar bisa memberikan pandangan yang lain terhadap apa sih itu pemeriksaan ginekologi, tapi... Uh, tidak hanya pemeriksaan dalam biasa, tapi menggunakan alat canggih, yaitu alat histeroskopi yang menggunakan kamera. Ya, untuk mempersingkat waktu, uh, uh, Profesor Osama, uh, I already introduced you that uh, you're very expert in histeroskopi and also um, it's not your first time here, so we already know your reputation when you Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, and um, untuk mempersingkat waktu, Prof. Osama, please, your time is yours. Okay. Thank you, Noor. Thank you. Salamat pagi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. May all the peace and happiness and success to light your way. Uh, in every lecture, before I start, I start by scanning with my eyes, you know, scanning my audience. <laughs> Are they interested or lazy? Are they sleepy or alert? Are they attending to me or playing in the phone? Okay. So actually today is a very special lecture for me. I say from my heart because of you, you, you. For the first time, 95% of my audience are new generation. The world will be better because of them. We already almost finished our homework. We are enjoying the rest of life. We will not add something new. We enjoyed the black and white and the color TV, and now they have the YouTube and the internet and the iPod, okay? So as we started from the black and white to the color TV, they start now from the iPod to space age technology. It's only because of you, the world could be better. That's why I'm enjoying to be with you. Thank you very much. So <laughs> Indonesia have a special memory to my heart. And I'd like to start with real story happened to me when I was a child. When I was in the school, that was in the 60s, at that time, uh, the world has seen a new movement called the Non-Alliance Group between our president, his name was Nasser, and Sukarno, and Jawaharlal Nehru. And they had a very global big meeting here in a city called, no, Bandung, Bandung, okay. So at that time I was a little boy, I don't know what is Indonesia, what is Bandung, I don't know. So the newspaper wrote a lot of news about our president meeting Sukarno in Bandung, blah, blah, blah. So in the school, they make an exam for us. And the question was, write a short account on Bandung. I said, oh, what is Bandung? <laughs> I don't know. So next to me was sitting another colleague. I said, please, please, what is Bandung? He said, it's a kind of spicy soup. So I wrote a full page about a spicy soup bandong with chicken and, and, and I failed in the exam. <laughs> and my father punished me and he then he brought me the atlas of the world. This is Indonesia, this is Jakarta, and this is Bandung. You should know it. So this was my first memory. Uh, Jog Jakarta is also special to my heart. And when I say this, I want to bring, bring to your attention why people love some place. Do you think 
I could love Bali more than here. Yes, Bali are beaches, nice places, nightclubs, food, seafood, okay. But probably I might love more Jakarta. What makes you love something is not the geography. It is the people living it. You love your home with your family more than the Four Season Hotel because my father and my mother. So the place where you find friends, you love more. So here I have friends, my best friend, Noor, and where is Nanda? Uh, Nanda Na okay. <laughs> so yes, Nanda and Okai. Okay, so wherever you have friends, you love them more. Uh, your country is unique by the human aspects. You don't have maybe oil like Saudi Arabia <laughs> or maybe technology like NASA, but you have what's more valuable, the people. I just arrived uh, one week ago. My first visit was in Gato Sobrato Hospital, the Presidential Army Hospital. This is my friend, Dr. Esti, who received me and we did a nice lecture. Uh, this all the big names attending the lecture and then we have a live surgery I brought you some picture to see how crowded was the live surgery we have interesting cases difficult cases and at the end of the day we had fun that's why I love the place because of the people and the friends and this is another city Samarang 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 and uh, these are all my friends Dr. Uh, uh, Rashid I think his name is Dr. Rashid and all the doc young doctors. So be prepared that your picture will come in my next presentation. Huh? <laughs> so are you ready? For what? <laughs> Do you think that I'm coming to teach you hysteroscopy? No. No, no, no. This is the surprise. Hysteroscopy is very, very, very little part of the whole life. Why you want to be good at fetal medicine? <laughs> Why you want to be a good doctor, okay? To work and serve people, you will serve for free, you will get money. <laughs> so let us be honest. We work for a return. And what is money? Rupees, just papers. It's papers. Why it makes you happy? Why you are happy when you have multi-millions of rupees? Why you are happy? It's the same like toilet paper, okay? You're happy because you know that you can use this paper to get something make you happy. Maybe for him, a Rolex watch. Maybe for you, a diamond ring. Maybe for you to give the, mo the money to your mother or for you to donate for the mosque. Whatever you do by this money, it will make you happy. So I am here to make you happy. <laughs> so are you ready to start by a small presentation about achieving your dreams. Are you ready? Say yes. Okay. bringing you the master key to achieve everything you want, not only hysteroscopy. Being happy in the hospital is not enough. You should be happy at the home. You should be happy in the street. You should be happy in your life. So let me start by some philosophy. Tell me what you see in front of you, a block of stone, just a block of stone. What I'm telling you is a real story. 500 years ago, there was a very famous Italian artist. His name is Leonardo da Vinci, you know? Leonardo was a famous artist and sculptures, make statues. So he was making a statue for a famous character called King David, you know, from the Bible, David. This statue now stands in Italy. It's the most magnificent artwork. So, when Leonardo was working on the rock, cutting into the rock, banging in the rock, boom, 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 
and sweating. A little boy saw him and the boy asked him, Sir, what are you doing? Why you are banging in the rock? So Leonardo smiled and said, My son, inside this rock, there is an angel. I am just setting the angel free. And then came the magnificent statue out of this rock. So you and you and you, the same like this rock. <laughs> Inside you, there is an angel hidden, but you don't know how to get it out. Bang on the rock, cut into the rock, read, learn, work. Work hard. This will get the best out of you and make you the angel. Just because you cannot see your talents, it does not mean it is not there. You understand my English? You have a lot of things inside you and it is very unfair. Many, many people, they live and die without know their talents. So, Success is the dream of everybody. And it's very wrong that you think that Osama is coming to give a lecture to help me to be success. No, success depends on the second letter of the word. Can you say it? Exactly. It's not you mean, it's you. It's a very big mistake to think that your teacher will help you to be success. No, it depends on you. So what about you? Are you prepared? <laughs> When I look at your eyes and I see your fresh look, you're still fresh because there are so many things you don't know about life in the future. <laughs> when I look about you, where are you standing on the stairs of success? Many of you are standing here. I want to do it, how I will do it. After I will leave you tonight, you will say, I will try to do it. But I have to be honest, by the end of the year, not all of you will be here. Only those who have my words touched their nerves, which irritate you, let you not to sleep, work hard for your dream. So every success starts by mindset. You know, when you buy a new app for your mobile or for your computer, any application or software when you upload it gives you a window set up okay so it is the mindset so today promise me you will restart your mind okay what does it mean restart your mind change many things you believe before you can sleep less and study more and work harder if you have this mindset the action will start. What action? You keep more hours in the night reading in the book. Action that you stay in the hostel, more time working without saying, I am tired, I want to go to eat. You will have more determination and then the results will happen. Sometimes we feel that we are helpless, that we cannot, that our power is less. So I'm gonna prove it to you that your power is more. I'll give you some life lessons. Nand, Anand, Nanda, what is your body weight? 70, 80, okay, you have to. Nanda is 80 kgs. If I ask him to come and lift up 200 kgs, what he will say? I can't. You know why he say I can't? Because he's weak? No, because his mindset. The answer from him that he can't come from his mind, not from his muscles. So let me show you a very important fact. The ant, the smallest creature, physiologically can lift up 10 to 12 times its body weight. So if you apply this to Nanda, he should be able to lift up 800 kgs. Once you are laughing, you don't believe me. <laughs> Why the ant can't? Maybe sir will tell me, but Nanda does not have muscles like the, the, like the ant. Look at the picture. 
There is no muscles in the hand. It is all in her mind, not in the muscles. If, if when he said, no, I cannot lift up, it is his mind. And I have a proof that ants are more intelligent than human. I'll prove it to you in the next picture. Imagine what will happen if some hungry people find food. What they will do? They will fight for the food. But look at the ants. When they find food, they share. They don't fight. They know that we share. We cut the food and each one take a part. So the mindset of the ant is better than us. I was visiting India last month doing training course and I visited an elephant farm. And in the elephant farm, they kept the elephant with a chain like this. So I was afraid to walk near the elephant. The man said, sir, no, don't be afraid. I said, but can the elephant chuck, cut the chain and attack? He said, yes, he can cut the chain very easy, but he will never do. I said, come on, why? Why the elephant will not cut the chain and run away? He said, the story, sir, is very simple. Because when they were very young, like you're very young now, we used to put a chain in the foot of the young baby elephant. And they tried to escape. But they couldn't. So when they grow up, the mindset that they cannot cut this, so they accepted the situation. You understand now why you said, I cannot lift up 200 kgs. We accepted the situation. So, madam, I have a feeling if we start treating, teaching the young generation that they can do more than us, they can do better than us, in 200 years, we'll have a completely new race of genius young people who can work more than us, time, who can sleep less, who can exercise better. We can be much better than So, please be an ant, don't be an elephant. Work hard, dream big. This is one, I, every morning, I start my day at 5 a.m. and I take some meditation and I write words. I write more outside medicine than in medicine. So yesterday I wrote this. If we don't have a dream to swim for, we will drown under the waves of frustration. You get the meaning? You have to swim for your dream. If you don't have a dream, you will go down into the depth. But not dreaming in the bed. Dreaming in the bed will change nothing. But the dreams that you keep you awake, you cannot sleep because you think, how can I be better? I want to sleep more. I want to look better. I want to be more clever at my work. How I improve myself. <clears throat> now, you listen to my lecture about hysteroscopy. Yesterday, you listen to a lecture about fetal medicine. Tomorrow, you'll see a lecture about endocrinology. Then start to think, which one is suitable for me? Should I go for fetal medicine? Mm, then I have to buy very expensive ultrasound machine. I don't have money. No. <laughs> Hysteroscopy, yes. Equipment is very simple. And I can buy. And I can be good. All right? No. I want to marry and stay at home. Okay, it's your right. <laughs> so choose well. But unfortunately, you are waiting for this. Aladdin lamp. To rub the lamp, I want to be the most beautiful girl in the world. No. I want to be the most successful doctor. No. These three people did not wait for Aladdin lamp. You know them or no? Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, and the little boy, Mark, has money more than Indonesia, okay? <laughs> and he's not graduate from medical school. He's not graduate at all. Do you know that? He didn't finish school. So don't think that because you are a medical doctor, you are very great. No. Everything needs perseverance. When you started learning how to ride a bicycle, you remember that day? First time you fall down. But by training one time and another time, you became competent. Challenge, challenge is the spices of life. Life without a challenge is like steamed rice, okay? Challenge is the masala, is the spices, okay? What is challenge? Challenge is to explore the underworld, to go down under the water and come up to tell you a story. 
challenge is riding a Harley Davidson race with the wind, feel the adrenaline, have wings fly in the sky and come back to tell young people stories and impress them that I want to be like this man. I'm much older than what you think, but I'm ready to challenge you in the push-ups now to see who can do more, all right? So, we become what we think we are. Yesterday or the day before in Bali, the young doctors was me. He said, sir, we don't feel that you're a professor. I say, so what do you feel about me? We feel that you're like us. We are a resident like us. <laughs> you become what you think you are. If you think that I am success, you will be success. If you think I'm smart, you will be smart. But not only think, think and work for that. Look at this dog. Who is more strong, dog or cat? The dog will kill the cat. Look at now how it will do. <laughs> Who is more strong? <laughs> the dog is stronger, but the cat feels that she is stronger. Okay? So, Kamu Bisa, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I hope that uh, my electric charge will uh, stimulate your heart and mind. And now, let me ask you, who is doing hysteroscopy? Raise your hand. None. Okay. If I'm giving this lecture for urologist, urologist, young doctor urology, and I ask them, who is doing cystoscopy? Everybody will raise his hand. <laughs> so it's a shame for gynecologist. The urology is same like us. They have the urinary bladder, uterus, two ureters, fallopian tubes, solid organ, kidney, and ovary, okay? What is the reaction of most gynecologists when they diagnose by ultrasound endometrial polyp? What they will do? DNC. What is the reaction of the urologist when they diagnose polyp in the urinary bladder? Cystoscopy. So my lecture today is a mind-changing lecture about the future of gynecologists. Let's start. Salamat Datong, welcome back again. In every lecture, I start by the same video. In every lecture. So what is the purpose? 
when I start this video, I stand on the back and my eyes start scanning the audience to see who will be interested, who will be his stroscopist. The best one among all you was this doctor. Yes, yes, you. I could read your eyes. Second, here, okay. Most of you were looking as if watching a movie, okay, enjoying, entertaining. But I could feel that she is saving in her hard disk and focusing. And I could see her hands is moving the telescope. Yes, I was. A, you will be a good hysteroscopist, okay? Thank you very much. So, <clears throat> welcome to my home. Ruma Saya, okay? This is the place where you enjoyed nine months full board accommodation. You remember that? It was the best time of your life. No responsibility, no work, no wake up early, no stresses, no taxes, yes, no fights. Whatever going outside, people are fighting or whatever, you are in peace, okay? <laughs> And even if the temperature outside is boiling hot or freezing cold, you are in that jacuzzi, 37 degrees. So this was the best time of my life. And you know, madam, I feel very jealous that all artists and singers, they make songs for the heart, for the eyes, but not to the uterus. <laughs> okay, I invite all of you tonight to go to YouTube and type my name, Osama Shauki, okay? You will find 3,000 videos. How many people have watched the videos? Million, 900,000, almost 2 million, okay? And how many people like it? Almost a million people. I have 50,000 needed to reach a million. So you go home and make like, 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 okay. <laughs> okay. So I will start by simple uh, tips and tricks to tell you how can you do hysteroscopy well. I will take it into several stages. First, how to enter the cavity, then how to see inside, and then how to operate inside, step by step. Because entering the cavity of the uterus is much different than laparoscopy entering the pelvis. In laparoscopy, the entrance is very easy. Troker and chuck, you're in. You need four or five times to train to do it. But hysteroscopy to travel by the 30 degree telescope through narrow cervical canal is very difficult. And many people fail to enter. Can I say 90% of people fail to enter? Why? Because of the fact of the design of the telescope. Let me give you a secret now. There are two telescopes in endoscopy. No, you can't. Just relax and listen to me. There are two telescopes in Indo. Design called zero angle telescope. This is the length like this. This is zero angle. Okay. Or 30 degree for oblique. The 30 degree, the telescope is back 30 degree. Okay. So the lens is looking more, say, up. Okay. In laparoscopy, mainly we use the zero degree. In hysteroscopy, it should be 30 degrees. Not possible to use it. I'll tell you why. The reason is that with the zero degree in laparoscopy, you can see front how to see the lateral wall. You can turn the lens left and right. Okay? But inside the uterus, if you have a zero degree, you can see front how to see the lateral wall. You cannot make like this because the cervix is here. Okay? You cannot make like this. So, the value of the 30 degree that allow when you are inside, you rotate the lens, you look to that side. You rotate like this, you look to that side. So the 30 degree design is meant to facilitate panoramic view and looking to the side of the page. But the disadvantage that the view of 30 degree is very confusing. Why confusing? With the zero degree, when I move forward, I see front. With the 30 degree, when I move forward, I see what? Up. Okay? So while you are going through the uterus, into the uterus, through the internal os, you'll find yourself not seeing the internal os. You're seeing what? Up. So you will be afraid that I am going wrong. So automatically, 
you do like this. So when you do like this, now you see very well. But the direction is wrong. This is the one single secret of hysteroscopy, okay? So when you are moving forward by the 30 degree, you will be seeing up. So the next step, you correct the view by, you lift your hand up, so the 30 degree will be zero degree. Now you can see front. Now the view is very good. You can see around the circle of the internal os, but the direction is wrong, and that results in false passage. How many times it happened with the beginners? Can you think? 100 times. <laughs> 100 times, all beginners. And you know, sir, that's the reason hysteroscopy is not popular. Everybody tried to do, <clears throat> he cannot go. I will not do again. Ultrasound can show me the polyp inside. I will not use hysteroscopy. So people get frustrated. This is an example of somebody was trying to go. This is the internal os, and he did two times full strike. It happened with everybody. Even after very long experience, I consider myself the king of hysteroscopy all over the world, okay? <laughs> Still, sometimes, sometimes, but not too much, I make this mistake. So, this is also a case examined by somebody, and he did a false track here. And when he did a false track, he just saw tubular cavity. So the diagnosis was Asherman. It's not an Asherman. I will show you how the mistake happened. This is the false track. And this is the correct. This is correct. Normal cavity. And that's the full track. So, Please be careful not to do this mistake. Again, I will show you how the view during insertion. Try to avoid the desire to have full circle view of the internal os. If you have a full circle view, this means your direction is wrong. You should have only up view. Look at this. Looking up, this is correct. Again, this is wrong. Now this is correct. Endometrial polyp. So, once you are inside the cavity, how to see the lateral walls? It is not like this, okay? It is not. It is rotation of the telescope. So you can see the lateral wall. Like you see now, this is the light cable, and the light cable is attached to the telescope. So rotating the light cable will rotate, rotate the telescope. You can see the lateral wall and even upside down the posterior wall. Okay, this is the attachment of the light cable. You see this notch? This is the fundus. This is tubal ostium. How to look at the side walls? You hold the light cable and rotate the light cable like this. So you'll be looking to the opposite side. Observe that. That's the fundus. Look at the notch, look at the notch. Rotate. And now you can see the lateral wall. You get the point? Now you can look it and rotate to the opposite side. You can see the other lateral wall. So this is how to see the lateral wall inside. These very little advices are really the secrets of hysteroscopy. <laughs> Nobody, few people know how to master it. Then, after finishing challenge to enter the cavity, now the challenge to see well. The most frustrating problem in hysteroscopy is that Karina Miraka Tidak Bias Milihat Demana Jiras. Okay. We cannot see well. All people say in laparoscopy, we can see very well. That's the uterus and the ovary. But in hysteroscopy, the view is very bad. The view that people see is the Japanese flag. Red circle over the white monitor. These views are very frustrating. That's very bad. And I don't know how this surgeon is trying to cut the septum. This is very dangerous. There is no vision, no panoramic view. 
unless you have a good view, you will not enjoy his trust. What does it mean, good view? This is the good view. Good view means full panoramic vision. You see the lateral wall, you see the fundus. Fundus in front of you. Lateral wall, rotation, ostium, other ostium, and insertion. And you can see endometrial polyp. Septum. So, going around the world, teaching about how to see well. But the most important thing to see well is distension. Okay? Unless you are able to expand the uterine cavity, you will not be see well because the cavity will be collapsed. So, the challenge in distension of the uterus is much more than the challenge of distending the abdomen in laparoscopy. In laparoscopy, when you fill the belly with few liters of gas, there is no leakage. But in hysteroscopy, there is leakage from the cervix and from the fallopian tube. So in hysteroscopy, you can achieve very well competent distension, but in hysteroscopy, a lot of leakage. So the cavity will collapse. So if the cavity collapse and the pressure inside is not enough, you will start to have bleeding. So you cannot see well, like this one. Here you cannot see well. And if the pressure inside the cavity less than the arterial pressure, once you start cutting into the myoma, blood will flow from the vascular space to the uterine cavity. So you cannot operate well. So unfortunately, again is teaching every place. I'm teaching now against others and they consider me that I'm crazy and I'm wrong, but I'm very confident I'm correct, because logically, if the pressure inside the uterus is less than the arterial pressure, and you start to cut, blood will come in, but it should be different, it should be like this. That's a higher pressure hysteroscopy. That's the fibroid. So you can have a good panoramic view. And let's see, when you cut, there will be no bleeding. Now, cutting into the myoma will be very easy without compromise of the view. No blood loss at all. Compare this to that. This is a failure at his prospect. And this is the good. I had to develop my histrojet, which is called Schauke histrojet. It's a pump to push more higher pressure and compress the bleeders. So, again, to summarize, to enter inside the cavity, you should have the mental correction of the 30 degree angle. And once you're inside the cavity, to look right and left, it is not side to side movement, it is rotation of the telescope. And then to be able to cut and to do operative step, you have to achieve a pressure enough to tamponate the bleeding vessels. So if the intra arterial pressure 120, you should work higher than 120. I know that what I say is again, it's what everybody teaching and again, it's what's in the textbooks, but people are afraid to say it. You have to operate with a higher pressure, but this is a very important thing you have to learn from me because I don't want to teach you how to drive a motorcycle and then you jump for a Harley Davidson. No, you try with a scooter and then the Harley Davidson because working at a high pressure let you see well and cut better. But this means more fluid going into the circulation. So if you spend much time, the patient will die from fluid overload. So there is no compromise. In laparoscopic myomectomy, I can be very patient and stay with you four hours, five hours teaching you and take your time, relax. But in hysteroscopy, I cannot say, take your time, relax. We have to finish quickly. So that's why for larger fibroid, you are asking me, somebody was asking me for fibroid, for larger fibroid, you cannot give it to a junior.
All right. Now we come to another vision about hysteroscopy. As I told you that hystero means uterus. My vision that it is not only for the uterus, it is for the vagina, for the cervix, for the cavity of the uterus. So it is for everything. That's why I give it a nice name, office gynoscopy. Office means in the outpatient. All right. I hate this instrument, okay? I feel it's the most scary instrument for the patient. And if you don't believe me, look at the picture of a patient waiting examination. Look at her. She is afraid. Why she's afraid? Because she's expecting that the doctor is coming to the room now, like this. <laughs> and the patient is terrified, especially with hearing the clicking sound, click, 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 click of this. And the patient will stand up and tell you, what are you going to do? Peter, I'll put this into your vagina to look at. You only look at the cervix. You don't see the vagina. So we call it vaginal speculum, hmm? but you don't examine the vagina. <laughs> you don't see any part of the world of the vagina. So, Waktunia Mingoba, Diri Kita Sindiri, all right? It's time for change. Time to put this in the museum or use it less frequently and start my new technique, which is using the hysteroscope. That's the hysteroscope, okay? To look inside the vagina, open the water, and that's vaginoscopy. I think from now on, no need to put that metal, awkward, discomfort speculum. This is the vaginal walls, posterior fornix, cervix, lateral wall. That's the best way to examine the vagina. And it's very simple in the office, no discomfort for the patient, and you can see many things inside. Many things like what? Like this. That's vaginoscopy, and that's the cervix. Lipsticks, okay? This is better than colposcopy. You can see this big cervical erosion. When we talk about infection, Sometimes we teach the students things that they never see. Like when we teach you that manifestations of trichomonas vaginalis, vaginitis, okay? We say there is itching, discharge, and strawberry color of the vagina. She knows very well the strawberry, but have you seen the strawberry vagina before? Never. <laughs> That's the strawberry vagina. Now you can see it well. Look at that. That's the color of the strawberry vagina. And actually, it is mixed infection. That's monelial infection and trichomonism. More than this, sometimes we see very rare diagnosis. When I was doing vaginoscopy for a patient of infertility and dyspareunia, there was this bluish spot. You see this blue spot? What is this? Look at that. You cut by the scissor and you have a chocolate blood. What's your diagnosis? Chocolate cyst. It's an endometrioma. It's an endometriosis of the vagina. You don't see because you don't examine with the hysteroscope. Even more than that, congenital anomalies of the vagina. This is a longitudinal vaginal septum. There are two types of septum you can see in the vagina. Transverse septum, this will cause cryptomenorrhea because the blood cannot go out. Transverse septum. Or longitudinal septum, that will cause dyspareunia and pain. So instead of using classic surgery, that's the view of vaginal septum. Dividing the vagina into two halves. So also you have to use a high pressure pump and then cut. That's the resectoscope to remove and release a vertical longitudinal vaginal septum.
So easily when you distend the vagina, you can to see two hemi vagina, septum is stretched in the middle, you use the mono or bipolar electric current, and keep cutting. The more you cut, the septum stretches and relax. External os is your landmark. So stay exactly in the midline, not going up towards the bladder or down towards the rectum. It's obvious how, in a short time, the two hemi-vagini are unified together and correction of the congenital anomaly. No need to put speculum, no need to use scissors, no need to take sutures after that. Septum is removed, okay? So, entering the uterine cavity is a big challenge, and many doctors feel a little bit hesitant. Is it easy to go by this telescope through the cervix without dilatation, without anesthesia, in the office? Actually, the diameter of the telescope is less than the uterine sound. So you should trust that you can do it without anesthesia. But sometimes we meet cases in the practice with a very narrow, tight service, like a case of mission impossible. Okay, postmenopausal bleeding. She has a severe cervical stenosis. Several trials to dilate failed, even perforation happened. And you know the movie, Mission Impossible. Who was the hero? I called him to come and help me. But he said, you see. So calling Tom Cruise to come and help in such difficult case, he said, no, I cannot do it, trust me. So calling another hero, also he cannot. So I have to do it myself. That's the external os. Going slowly and make advantage of the fluid pressure to open the cervical canal will help you to find the way and find the internal os. But unfortunately, it is very narrow. It is stenotic. How can you go inside? So using the scissors to do visual under vision, dilatation. No more blind dilatation. This is the scissor to dilate the internal os. So when you do the procedure under vision, there is no chance for false track. There is no chance for perforation. So internal os becomes much wider. Now you can go in and that's the cavity of the uterus. There's two polyps inside. It was earlier diagnosed by ultrasound, but failed for blind dilatation keratage. So this is the way it should be. And that's the polyp inside. So access and entry of the uterine cavity is much easier by hysteroscopy than by blind curettage. Let me move forward to other pathologies. Okay, polyps. Endometrial polyps are one of the most frequently encountered pathology in gynecology, and they could be responsible for so many uh, clinical situations, whether infertility or bleeding, uh, spotting, pain. So unfortunately, like you said in the morning, that most polyps are treated by blind DNC. Blind DNC can only reach polyp in less than 10% of the cases less than 10 percent even if you do keratage and you find some tissues coming out it is part of the polyp not from the base of the polyp so it will grow back again so dnc is like a blind man walking with the stick what does it mean dnc dilatation and keratage what's your name Grisa. Grisa. Krisa is saying DNC is dilatation and curettage. Okay, that was in the past. Let us change it now to deliberate crime. Okay? 
we should not do blind DNC. The sensitivity of blind biopsy is 11% compared to 100% by hysteroscopy. So if urologists are doing polyps in the bladder by cystoscopy, every gynecologist should do by hysteroscopy. Time for change. I will show you how the accuracy of hysteroscopy in diagnosis of polyps. That's a case of postmenopausal bleeding. And there is an endometrial polyp. You can see the polyp filling the cavity. You can see the base of the polyp. This is the pedicle. This is a kind of hyperplasia. And it's very obvious. Everybody look at the wall of the polyp. It's very cystic. That's a cystic hyperplasia, okay? Everybody look at the wall of the polyp. Do you see these fine capillaries? Enjoy the surprise now. You know what it is? Yes, the RBCs. You can see the RBCs with a Jakarta traffic jam, okay? Like cars. It's impressive. It's amazing. You can see the red blood corpuscles flowing. And everybody wants to learn hysteroscopy, okay? So I show you the accuracy of diagnosis. Okay. So my colleagues in the ultrasound are feeling jealous. Said, okay, Osama, our 3D ultrasound can show the polyp the same like you. I said, okay. But you just see and write a report. But I see and treat. That's the see and treat. Okay. That's the polyp. And the, in the office without anesthesia, Without dilatation, you can do this simple procedure. Cutting the pedicle. The pain felt by the patient is no more than the pain of insertion of a contraceptive device. Very simple. So, another polyp. This is the pedicle of the polyp. Do you think that these procedures to be done by senior doctors like Dr. Noor? No. It is for you, for the undergraduates. Can I surprise you by something? Office hysteroscopy in the United Kingdom is performed by nurses. Yes. Madam, nurses are doing this. They don't do the septum or myoma just to look and take a polyp. For Ms. IOCD. So when I start to say I'm happy that you are the young generation, you are better than me. Really. I'm not joking. When I text a message on my iPhone, I do it like this. But when she do, the ergonomic in your hand is better. So that's a polyp cut very easily. Okay. Let me move forward to another issue, infertility and hysteroscopy. There was a long discussion and debate. Is it a must to do hysteroscopy? Is it valuable or no? This study published in Fertility and Sterility about what are the hysteroscopic findings in patients with failed IVF. Okay? Out of 500 patients, do you know what's failed IVF? You understand what is failed IVF? What does it mean, failed IVF, sir? It means loss of $4,000. Am I correct? It means big psychological trauma to the patient. So 500 cases have failed IVF when hysteroscopy performed almost half of them. There was something inside the uterus. So it is unfair. Before you put the seed on the soil, look. Look before you put, okay? These are multi-center studies. What does it mean, Pukti? Proof. Okay, so this is my evidence. <laughs> I spent all the night on Google Translator to make it uh, for you, but I forgot the meaning of the word. Okay. So <laughs> the proof is that 
many many indonesian language are very special today when we were driving in the car i was driving he was driving me and i said oh stop stop now noor he said sir what you want have you forgot something in the hotel i said no 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 stop immediately and i jumped from the car to take picture for a big sign on the street dr gigi so he looked at me as if i'm crazy I said, what is this man is doing i was very happy to find dr gigi because my wife name is gigi okay <laughs> So I sent the picture by Facebook, said, you are very famous in Yogyakarta, your name everywhere. And in the entrance here, I took a picture, faculty, Dr. Ata Gigi. I told my sons, your mother have a faculty here, okay? <laughs> okay. So congenital uterine anomalies, one of the most important uh, causes of infertility. What is the incidence? In general population, if you take 100 ladies from the street, five of them will have uterine septum or anomaly. If you go to infertile population, more than double, almost 13%. If you go to recurrent abortion, more than that, about one quarter of them, they have a septum. The most recent classification of congenital uterine anomalies by the ESHRI put it into U0, the normal uterus, U1, which is the dysmorphic. Morph means shape. This means wrong. So this morphic uterus, wrong shape uterus, which is either the infantile or the hypoplastic. U2 is the most common one. The uterus is divided by a septum. U3, each cornea is separate. It is bicorneate. U4 is the unicorneate. U5 is the aplastic uterus. This is a very beautiful 3D picture for a, a short septum, okay. To differentiate between septum and arcuate, you should do a 3D ultrasound. And then this is the osteal point. Draw a line between the osteal point. If this depression, more than 50% of the wall thickness, then it is a septum. If less, it's an arcuate uterus. So this kind of anomaly can be corrected easily in the office. No need for anesthesia, no need for dilatation. Simply like that. You can see the fundus. Using the scissors to cut and release the fibers of the fundal thickness, which people used to think it's fibrous tissue, it is muscular tissue. Septum is muscular, not fibrous. And this is the final view after releasing the septum. Okay, when we have this image by histography, it's very confusing. Is it a septum or biconiate? Okay. So I have a very nice tricks to help you to diagnose. For histography, if this angle between the two corneas less than 90 degree, 100% septum, you don't need to do any other investigation. If by histography, the angle between both corneas, this is the angle, okay, is less than 90 degree, it is a septum. But if you have this picture with the angle more than 90 degree, you cannot know if this is a septum or biconium. The only way to differentiate is 3D ultrasound. Not hysteroscopy, not laparoscopy, not MRI. This is a beautiful image of 3D. This is one endometrial cavity, the other cavity, and in between you can find this is the septum. All right? If you inject water during hysterography, uh, uh, ultrasound, it becomes more uh, clear image. This is sono hysterography, and you can see the septum in between. So after you know these rules, Tell me about this image. This is another 3D ultrasound. This one endometrial line, cavity, and the other cavity. In between, black. There is no tissue. So this is a biconite uterus. Biconite means each corneal alone, all right? That's biconite. This is different uh, views of a septum. Here is the internal os. Here is the tubal point. So this septum not reaching the internal, this is a short septum. This is a long septum reaching the internal os. And what is this? Uterine cervical septum. Okay. So 3D ultrasound is the most important to diagnose 
more important than MRI, hysteroscopy, and laparoscopy. The technique of septum release by either by the resectoscope or by the scissor. You are still young to teach you this advanced technique. I told you only drive a scooter. Now we are going to the Harley Davidson, how to remove the septum by resectoscope. My technique is to dilate the cervix and use a resectoscope electrode, move it from one side to another. When you move it like this, the septum will release. So proper distension of the cavity will stretch the septum. This is the cutting electrode. What is this? Tubal ostium. So the tubal ostium is the landmark for the level of cut. Otherwise, you might go up or down. So stay exactly in the middle, cut, cut, cut until you have completely released the septum. Let me show you the surgery. This is a broad septum. Very broad septum. Do you appreciate the movement of the electrode from side to side? Looking at the internal os at the landmark. Always have a panoramic view. Keep the internal, keep the ostium as your reference point to the level of the cut. So this is the final view after septum has been released. This is before and this is after surgery. Complete reconstruction. Okay. Another case, and you'll enjoy the song. This song is an Egyptian song, very famous. It's a love song. And the meaning also apply to my feeling toward the uterus. The song words say, before my eyes have seen you, I was not living. I, I was only born the moment I have seen your eyes. Not you, I mean hysteroscopy, okay. <laughs> so this is another case of septum. Here now, we are in one cornea. And you will see the tubal ostium just now. After that, we start resection. That's the tubal ostium. And this is the septum. Please observe and appreciate septum tissues retract. So septum is not excised. He's saying, at the time of sunset, I stand in front of the sea and I see your eyes on the sky. Okay. All of the tubal ostium is your landmark. Okay. Resectoscope is a very effective technique to release the septum, but still we can do it by the scissors. The advantage of the scissors is that you avoid the use of electrosurgery, it's much safer. And if perforation happens, the scissors is less dangerous. That's the septum. And scissors. Can you advise, tell me why there is no bleeding? Pressure. If you don't have enough pressure, blood will flow in and you'll not be able to see. So you have to keep a pressure. I will not say a number, but whatever enough to compress. And always look at the tu ostium, tubal ostium as your landmark and cut into the septum. Again, septum is incised, not excised. This is the final view. Okay. So I move now to the subject before the last, which is Asherman syndrome. Asherman syndrome is a famous uh, entity, but unfortunately, all of you doesn't know what is Asherman. <laughs> People think that Asherman is intrauterine adhesions. No. 
It's not correct. This is Mr. Joseph Asherman. Let me surprise you by a new fact. Joseph Asherman published this paper 1945 with the name of Amenorrhea Traumatica, published by Joseph Asherman. He says that following complicated labor or abortion, stenosis or blockage of the internal os. You see, madam, it is not intrauterine adhesions. It is stenosis or blockage of the internal os of the cervix may occur, thus producing amenorrhea. This amenorrhea is not functional. So please stop saying Asherman for intrauterine adhesions. Actually, this article is very, very important for a political reason. You know why? This article published 1945. Look at the title. Joseph Asherman, Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Hadassah Municipal Hospital, Tel Aviv. So it was not Israel. <laughs> it is Palestine, and it is occupied by Israel. So this paper, scientific paper, prove that this land belongs to Palestine. I can say this in Indonesia. I cannot say this in Europe. They will kill me, OK? <laughs> So, when adhesions sometimes either partial, like bands of adhesions, so when you distend the cavity, you go and cut, or total obliteration of the cavity. This multiple filling defects is bands of adhesion. When you look at this hysteroscopy view, this is not a septum. These are adhesions. You see one, two, three, four, many adhesions inside. <laughs> The key feature for proper adhesiolysis is to keep the adhesion under stretch, and that will be only fulfilled if you maintain an enough proper pressure distending the cavity, separating the uterine walls. Second advice, always do adhesiolysis by scissors. Cold scissors, no electrocautery. Electrocautery for Asherman will make it more bad. So you have to use cold scissors. And in the coming cut, yes, look at this. Now you cut. Look at the next one. In the next cutting, you will appreciate the value of the fluid pressure. Look carefully here. Have you noticed that spontaneous retraction? This is a case of a zero cavity. There is no intrauterine shadow at all. And this is because of a massive intrauterine adhesions. The uterine walls are glued together, glued, you know, when you wake up in the morning and your eyebrows are glued together, you have to make like this. So I use the technique of hydro dissection. Look at this. Look at this. Don't move your eyes and enjoy the hydrostatic. Hydro dissection. Look at this. You see the release of adhesions. You have to work very slowly. Give a chance for the water to dissect and open the space. Look at this step. Look at the spontaneous release of the adhesions by the hydro dissection. And suddenly it will open the cavity. Look at that. More release, more release, retracting fibers. There is some small window here. You see that window? Keep watching and we reach a very nice surprise at the end. There is a window here. And all this fibrous band. Look at that. Look at that. Snapping out. Almost complete adhesiolysis done, but we have to see a clue to tell us that we reach the fundus of the uterus. So what is the clue? Is to see some part of good endometrium. So 
So this is the fundus. And look here now at that corner. Something will give us a clue that complete adhesiolysis was fulfilled, reaching the level of the. Tell me, what is this? Ostium. So this is the ostium here. Okay, so this is the picture before and after. She had a beautiful cavity after that. The patient was a very famous uh, Bollywood star. So this is the newspaper of India, the Times of India, and they wrote an article about the healing touch. Because she was desperate, zero cavity, and then she became normal. Well, can we add more applications for hysteroscopy? Yes. I told you, so for the vagina, cervix, uterus, and the fallopian tube. Look at the ostium. Creating bubbles by a syringe and see the bubbles flowing from the ostium. This is the tubal ostium. This is some new innovative technique, not published yet even. I will show you another modified technique, very nice, for assessment of the fallopian tube by hysteroscopy. This one. This is the fundus of the uterus. You already have seen how the bubbles can go from the ostium like this, and that's you. Yes. Methylene blue. Going like an arrow into the ostium. Again. A very simple office procedure that can tell us about the patency of the fallopian tube. Again, look at this. So in the future, we could have more and more application for hysteroscopy other than just septum and fibroid and the uterine cavity. We will finish our day today. This is the last topic I'm talking about which is uterine fibroids, all right? Fibroids are very common and the clinical situation depends on the location of the fibroid. Definitely, the more they go toward the cavity, the more symptoms will appear. This kind of fibroid, they cause less symptoms. This is the maximum symptoms. The FIGO has put most recent classification of fibroid according to their location. Type zero, which is the pedunculated fibroid and the whole fibroid hanging into the uterine cavity. Type 1, which more than 50% of the fibroid bulging into the cavity. Type 2, it's a more deep fibroid into myometrial, less than 50% into the cavity. Type 3 and 4, both of them are intramural fibroid. But type 3, touching the endometrium. Type 4, touching the serosa. When it migrates more outside the serosa, it's type 5. More than 50% migration outside type 6. Type 7 is the pedunculated subserous, which equal to type 0, but subserous. According to the European Society also, they recommended that the kind of fibroid to be treated by hysteroscopy should have some bulge into the cavity. It's like type 0, type 1. The most difficult is type 2, when it is deep. So first step, you create the space, start resecting the pieces of the fibroid, and push them to one side, Avoid going in and out. Try to finish the procedure in single insertion and don't spend much time, otherwise fluid overload. The value of this tension will be seen in this video. This is the external os. And inside there is a huge fibroid filling the uterine cavity and bulging into the cervix. You can see now this is a very small, tiny endocervical polyp. And the fibroid looking at you through the internal os. Polyp fibroid. So I am now changing the fluid pressure 
from low to high to demonstrate the value of higher pressure to be able to enter the cavity. Because at a low pressure, cavities collapse. There is no space. So in this video, you appreciate the need for a higher pressure. This is a very small endocervical polyp, but the internal os is blocked by the fibroid. The standard pressure in most pumps can go up to 120. This is not enough 120. My pump can give up to 400 pressure. So using a higher pressure will push the fibroid and let you be able to go in like this now. Look at that higher pressure now. This will push the fibroid up, create the space, and then you drive in. Now the space is created, and we can go and enter into the cavity, explore the cavity. A huge myoma. This at least 10 centimeter fibroid. Filling the whole uterus that's my pump that's my equipment office hysteroscopy mini resectoscope large resectoscope The higher the pressure, you can create the space, you can push the fibroid to one side and be able to explore the uterine cavity. Look at this, going more up, 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 up. And we should see now the tubal ostium. Look at this. That's the ostium now. And this is the resection. This procedure is driving the Harley Davidson at full speed. It is not for beginners. Not because it's difficult, but because it will require more time, more fluid overload, and patient will die from the complication. Not like laparoscopic mimectomy. Laparoscopic mimectomy you can work for five hours. No risk. Here you have to finish. Otherwise, patient will die. The myoma fibers look white, solid fiber. This is the myoma fibers. So when you decide to stop, when you finish the whole myoma and reach the myometrium, that's the myometrium. Now you can see, look carefully, appreciate the pinkish color. The pinkish color, these pinkish colors of the myometrium. Another myoma, big one. I'm not a pervert, but I like to Jump watch. over the myoma, pull the electrode towards you. And as I said to you this morning, any difficult things only in the start. When you practice, you can master and it will be easy. But it will take time. Everything takes time. Fruits takes time to mature, okay? So you can do it if you start practicing now. That's the myoma finished, all right? When you cut the myoma, don't cut thin slices. Otherwise, the cavity will be crowded by small tissues and you cannot see well. Better to cut as potato wedge, not potato chips, okay? Type three myoma, deep one. You cannot see the myoma inside the cavity here. Okay, but the ultrasound prove there's a posterior wall, low corporeal myoma. According to the guidelines, this is difficult to remove. But with modification of the technique, open a window, 
And then you can see the myoma here. You see the myoma? Cut more. You can see the myometrium now. You see myometrium is this pinkish fibers. And the myoma is the solid fibers. Okay. You keep cutting until you finish the whole procedure. The technique is, you understand now. I'm a good teacher, by the way. Wait until I teach you how to do normal labor cesarean section. I can teach you very well. So this is the technique of deep myoma resection. Another technique for very small submucous fibroid. This is about one and a half centimeter on You can see the fibroid now, it's white. You can grab it by a grasper. And then you twist the myoma. You keep twisting until it gets disengaged from its bed. Keep watching. Don't move your eyes. Enjoy the myoma jumping out. This is the fibroid. This is the grasper and the myoma is out now. You see that? And this is the myoma bed. So again, this is a simple office procedure. No need for anesthesia, no need for dilatation, and you can do it simply by some instruments like the grasper and forceps. Last case of today is not supposed I show it to you because it's a case of big muscles, and it is wrong to teach you to do adventure and dangerous things. But the purpose is to teach you that failure is a success if we learn from it. And nothing is impossible. What is impossible? I am possible. You got the point? So, this is a case of type 6 fibroid by ultrasound. The myoma is subserous intramural. So you, how to reach from below? You should know the story of the patient because it's a very special case. She's a case of infertility, bilateral tubal block, and fundal fibroid occupying the fundus and bulging from the cirrhosis. So you cannot reach by history. It is classic for laparoscopy or open myomectomy. But the problem, the patient had a previous midline incision surgery four or five times for intestinal problems, uh, resection, anastomosis, colostomy, something like this. So when they tried to remove the fibroid by surgery, they failed. It was not reachable, frozen pelvis. And the family was asked for a consent, possibility to bowel injury. They refused. So the surgeon stopped the surgery and the patient still have the fibroid. So the patient asked my consultation, asking if there is any possibility for hysteroscopy. My answer was no. According to the guidelines and recommendation, there is no possibility. And when I teach students, I say, you have to respect the guidelines. You have to respect the rules. I can violate the rules, okay? Because when you do mistakes, they will kill you. But when I do mistakes, they will say he's an expert, okay? So I decided to do a procedure which is not a standard, not published, is to go by the hysteroscope and cut into the fundus. This is the fundus. Assuming when I cut into the fundus, the myoma may fold down, and then I can remove by the hysteroscope. So let us see what happened, because I failed, and failed again, but succeeded at the end. So this is the fundus, cutting into the fundus by the scissors. This white tissue is the myometrium. So I want to test your power of observation. I want you to keep looking. As soon as you see the fibroid reach, you tell me. 
Don't be shy. If you see the fibroid, tell me. Who said yes? Don't be shy. Yes. I told you, you'll be the best. She said yes. That's the fibroid, yes. That's the fibroid, okay? okay. So I expanded the incision from side to side, but unfortunately, fibroid did not fall down. Did not fall down. Frustration, failure. Success comes when failure stimulates your mind to think and to invent. So the idea came to my mind is to insert laparoscopic myoma screw. But this is the channel for hysteroscopy. Laparoscopic myoma screw cannot go from here. It's very big. So I inserted the laparoscopic myoma screw side by side. So this was another mission impossible. This is the final view. So this is the laparoscopy myoma screw, and this is the fibroid. You should be careful to avoid perforation. So just screw to the center of the myoma and pull down. Now look, myoma starts to deliver and come down and screw more. When you see the myoma starts to come down, screw more and pull, screw and pull. Until the whole fibroid is delivered into the cavity. You see myoma is getting more and more into the cavity. The whole myoma now is submucous. That's the final view. Let me explain to you. This is the ostium, corneo. Here is the myoma bed. Look at that. This is the myoma bed. And the myoma is completely extracted, resected outside. But how this big bed will close? I cannot take sutures here. Just by decreasing the distension pressure, the edges come to each other. This patient has now two twins, girls, after successful IVF, after 12 years infertility. So believe that nothing is impossible. Trima Kasi for you. Thank you very much. I feel I want to spend the whole day with you. You are lovely. You are nice. You are interested and uh, excited about hysteroscopy. So before I go from this room, I want to show you that how simple it is. That's the whole set of office hysteroscopy, okay? I teach that office hysteroscopy, the hysteroscope is your stethoscope. The same like a gynecologist, the, the cardiologist have a stethoscope, he should have that. It's not for the hospital, for you. You should have it in your home. When you go to the work in the morning, you take it with you. But you still need a camera and light source and, and, and. The camera and light source and the equipment, this is very expensive. This is in the hospital. You connect your telescope, you do the cases, you finish, you clean, and you take it home with you. You get the point? The price of this is very affordable. This is the telescope, 2.9, with the inner sheet. There are two notches here. You put the scope, align with the notch, and close. This diameter is 3.2 or 3.4. The retrain sound, 4 millimeters. The Mirena intra-trank contraception, 5 millimeters. 
So this is less than the uterine side. When you hold it in your hand, here are the connections. The fluid from here and the light source from there. And the camera here. This channel is to put the scissors or the grasper. So when you hold it in your hand, you get confused. Where is up, where is down? So you remember my advice? The rain comes from up, water from up. The light of the sun rises from bottom. So light is here. You love that? And the camera, this is how to do this. And then you go, you look right, left, and go up. How much time it takes to do office instruction? Three minutes. Take five minutes. Cannot go in, stop. You're not even. It is not like ultrasound that you keep trying, keep a little bit that you know. Here, if you cannot go in in three minutes, it means that you're going wrong. Don't try to go again. You are going wrong. This means you have to come and meet me, and I help you and teach you again how to do. <laughs> all right. So it's all about how to drive in, look left, look right, and then go up. And for the senior teachers, I want to ask you to help me to teach all the young generation to be able, by inspection of the cavity, to know the type and character of the individual. They can able to know this is prolific, secreted, hyperplasia, malignant. Same like dermatology. The dermatologist look at the skin and he can know the lesion. So gynecologist should have an eye to look at the cavity and say, this is kind of new. It's a new vision for gynecology. So I will stay with you, teach you, and inshallah, you achieve your dreams. Thank you very much. I love you all, and I wish to see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Prof. Osama for a very, very interesting lecture. And uh, we will have questions and maybe we, we will spare it into maybe four. And um, uh, please, if there are any questions, any question related to hysteroscopy or... One of the biggest failures in humans that they are afraid to ask. Really? You find that inside the heart they have so many questions, but they're afraid to ask. They don't want to ask. The lady who won the competition of Mrs. World, she's not the most beautiful. I you agree? When you look at the picture, you remember, why they choose her? I am more beautiful than her. I'm sure you have said this. The one who chose her for Miss World. But she won the competition because she decided to step in. This is advice for you. Don't be afraid to ask. Don't be embarrassed. Don't think that your question might be stupid and the people will be laughing. Let them laugh today. You will laugh tomorrow. You understand? First question. Raise your hand. Yes. You are the winner. <laughs> and before the question, you say your name. And tell me what you think about it. Um, thank you for the chances. I'm Grisel, and um, I ask, okay. So I was wondering after watching uh, all the videos that you showed that um, during the procedures there are either you use the electrocorder or you use the scissors. So it is clear if you use the electrocorder, you can actually prevent bleeding because you. Um, stop the bleeding directly. However, if you use the scissors and after you, rem uh, you remove the or reduce the pressure and all, the, yeah, and then the bleeding will start to pour out. And then what, what could or what would you do? Like that's, how is the post that's management? That's a very repeatable question I hear from everybody. And the fact that you ask this question, this means that you really understood my lecture and you are following very well because everybody asked me the same question. Number one, the purpose of using electrocautery is not for hemostasis, not to stop the bleeding. No, it's just to use it to cut. I'm not using it for hemostasis. 
Second thing, there is no any worry or fear of bleeding in hysteroscopic surgery. If you look at the literature, there is no a single case of mortality because of bleeding in hysteroscopy. Never, never. The bleeding in hysteroscopy is the same like bleeding in the postpartum. Okay, because when I cut the septum by the scissors or the resectoscope, after I decrease the pressure a little bit, you will see pumping the septum, scary. It's like, like fountains, very strong, because it was magnified by the lenses, very strong. This does not require any cauterization or hemostasis. Just go out, leave the uterus to contract. These bleeding vessels, they are coming through the myometrium. So once the uterus retracted back, it will squeeze the blood vessels and bleeding will stop. Only very few instances you continue to have bleeding if she has bleeding uh, disorders or severe <coughs> hypertension. So this will interfere with the clotting mechanism. But in hysteroscopy, we never care about hemostasis. And again, it's what you think. The purpose of using electrocode is not for hemostasis. It's not just to cut quickly, all right? So there is no worry about it at all. Sometimes, if a big myoma, we give uh, uh, vasopressin sometimes to decrease the blood flow. And there are some people claim that using uh, oxytocin during hysteroscopic surgery might also contract more the uterus and prevent it. But your question is a very intelligent question. Thank you, please. Thank you. Another intelligent question. Sure. Don't think like this. Think like this. Your name and your question. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, my name is Sasa. Sasa. Yeah. Um, when somebody says Kimakasi, the reply say Sasa or Sasa? Sama. 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 Okay. So, so my question is about the bleeding again. So you mentioned before that you use the higher pressure to prevent the, ble uh, the bleeding, but I want to ask you about the complication. Is there any um, like chance for the uterus to be ischemic? And if there is a chance for it to be ischemic, how long do you need to prevent the ischemic? Thank you. Well, uh, the worry of complication with high pressure is correct, but it's not because of ischemia. Ischemia never happened. But the worry that when you use a high pressure and there is open vessels, you are pushing this fluid into circulation. It is not like in laparoscopy. Laparoscopy are using carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is not dangerous and it's not absorbed into blood. So you can operate for four or five hours with pneumoperitoneum, no worry. But in hysteroscopy, the fluid you are using, some of it leaking out, some of it going into the blood vessels. So the uh, recommendation that if the deficit between the inflow and the outflow is more than one liter, you have to stop the surgery. How to measure this? You know how many bottles you used, and the nurse count in the bucket how many out. If the difference is more than one liter, it has been already into circulation, so you have to stop. And the danger is more if you are using monopolar surgery, which requires electrolyte-free solution, like glycine. Because with monopolar, you cannot use fluid with electrolytes. It will make spark. So now, recently, we have a bipolar resection, which can utilize saline. Saline is isotonic solution. It will go into the circulation as fluid and electrolytes. So there will be some volume overload, but the electrolyte balance is kept. The patient will not die. But if you are using only glycine, you're pushing only fluid, no electrolytes. So the patient will suffer severe dilutional hyponatremia, death. Okay. So the problem with high pressure is not the ischemia. It is the more fluid going into the circulation. That's why I say in intrauterine surgery, and by the way, myoma, large septum, Asherman, this is not hysteroscopy. It's called intrauterine surgery. Hysteroscopy is diagnostic, polyp, uh, remove IUCD, biopsy, this is hysteroscopy. For just simple diagnostic and simple procedure, any pressure is enough. 
even low pressure is okay. You just go and look inside. But in triatrine surgery, you have to use a higher pressure to distend the cavity. You have to finish quickly. There is no the pleasure of working slowly. No. That's why training for hysteroscopy is difficult. I cannot give you a hand to play inside the cavity for 40 minutes or 30 minutes. The myoma should be 15 minutes, 20 minutes finished. Suppose I cannot finish it. Stop. Do it in two steps. If the pathology is big, do it in two steps. The mortality in hysteroscopy, although people think that hysteroscopy is less invasive than laparoscopy, but it is more fatal. Mortality with hysteroscopy are more than laparoscopy because the surgeon forget the fact that this fluid is going into circulation. And he keeps struggling, working, working. He wants to finish the surgery, but the patient is finished before he finished the surgery. Okay? So that's why hysteroscopy in the sense of diagnostic and simple pathology, it is for everyone. This is the scooter. Everyone can, can drive a scooter, all right? Even young girls. But the big myoma is the Harley Davidson, boom, 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 okay? <laughs> you need a helmet. You should be strong to drive a 400 kilograms bike. So the good teacher who motivate his students, show them the guidance, but also put the brakes. Huh? Don't uh, run very fast. So when you try doing many, many diagnostic procedures, your hand ergonomics will be improved. Your speed in cutting will be slowly better. Then you can jump to two centimeter myoma, one and a half centimeter, then three centimeter myoma. And then if you can be the marathon runners, you can go to four and five, but this will take a long time. But in fact, 80% of hysteroscopy is the simple procedure which I told you nurses are doing it. Like uh, miss the intrauterine contraceptive device, they cannot get it out. Uh, a polyp to remove, all the DNCs should be by hysteroscopy. You go and look, you see the cavity, then you go out and then you do the curettage. So you should do the curettage after visual confirmation of the cavity. And if there is a polyp, it should be removed under vision, not blindly. I showed you the study only 20% you can remove the polyp by blind curettage. And in my opinion, that is the reason of the high incidence of hysterectomy. You know why? When the patient suffers from bleeding, perimenopausal, diagnosed as a polyp, she go to a doctor, he will do curettage for her. The patient cure for two months. After two months, the polyp bleed again. Then the patient go to another doctor, he do another curettage, and the patient continue to bleed. So when the patient goes to him, he will convince her very well to do Hysterectomy. If you remove the pathology in a correct way from the start, we will not reach the situation of uh, uh, desperate uh, bleeding and she has to do hysterectomy. Okay, have I answered your question? Okay. Sir. In my next visit, uh, uh, just one, I have to tell a story. I agreed with Dr. H. Nandi, H. Nandi Rahman from Gatot Sobrato Hospital that we will make a proposal letter for the government of Indonesia and the government of Egypt. Proposal from myself that we invite, sponsor 10 doctors each year from Indonesia, not from one city, from Samarang, Jakarta, Jakarta, one doctor, and they get training in Cairo University. So we will try to get sponsor from the government for your travel and stay. So those who ask me questions today, I will take them with me, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Professor, for the great presentation. My name is Haryadi. Yeah, okay. I have three questions for you. Uh, the first, how can you inflate the vaginal cavity without uh, leakage of the water? And then the uh, second, how high pressure for the hysteroscopy? How you mentioned, high? yeah, how much high? And then for the high pressure, there is uh, the risk of embolism. Because not the water. Okay. Answer first question: How to get how to get good view at the vagina? No need, no need. Okay. <laughs> Definitely, the leakage from the vagina is very high. Whatever pressure inside will not do this balloon. <clears throat> it's a very simple technique. With one hand, look at my nose. I do like this. Okay. With one hand, you press on the valve like this. I press on the valve like that, and the telescope in. So when you compress the valve, still there is some leakage, but you have enough to the stand. Or if you have, if you want to have both hands free, ask the nurse to do like this for the body.
okay, like that. All right, so this keep the fluid and the tension is very good. But definitely you have to use the maximum pressure from the pump to compensate for the leak. Second thing, when you ask how high pressure, I hate to say high and low. Let it be, what is that? Proper pressure. Like for example, if I tell you what is the, the best or the optimum or the suitable speed of driving, if this is the question, if you are in the streets of Jog Jakarta, 60 or 40. If you are in the Autobahn highway of Germany, 180, okay? So it is very variable on the size of the cavity of the uterus and the type of the procedure. If it's a diagnostic procedure polyp, 70, 80 is enough. But if it's a big myoma, the pump show the pressure coming from the pump, 300 which is in the textbook, they say killing for the patient, okay? 300, so the pressure coming is 300. When you're inside the uterus, there is leakage from the cervix, there is leakage from the fallopian tube. Do you think that the pressure inside the uterus is 300? No, no, it's much less. How much less? Difficult to know, because there is no sensor to measure the intracrine pressure. The number of the pressure we are talking about, it is what's coming from the machine. But inside the uterus, you cannot know. How to know? I'll tell you a little trick that you can guess. If you start to cut into the septum and you are putting the pressure 200, 200. If you start to cut and there is tick, tick, some bleeding, what does it mean? The inside is less than 100, <laughs> okay? So I increase in the pump until bleeding stops. So you are more than 120. Although the pump, in Europe, they are attacking me that Osama is teaching wrong. He says use 400. No, I didn't say use 400. I say the pump should be up to 400 to compensate for the leakage during surgery. This is the, the issue, all right? The little secret for me, but you don't do like me, okay? My, what I do in any surgery, but this is after years of years of skills, I put the pump to the maximum, maximum. Okay, and then this is the stopcock, all right? This is the stopcock. So I increase and decrease from here. Same like when I was using my presenter, this controlled the volume of the sound. So I asked the audiovisual man, put it to the maximum here. He said, Sir, it will be very loud. He said, don't worry, I will control from here. Right, so I decrease and increase from here. So during big surgery, I put the fluid to the maximum. So I don't depend on the nurse. Go up, go down, go up. No, I put it to the maximum. I control from here. But what I suggest for you, for any normal simple procedure, use a pressure around 100. It's okay. In the office, there is another control for the pressure, which is the patient herself. She's your control. Because sometimes when a higher pressure, the patient will feel out pain. So sometimes we work with a pressure of 40 or 50 to avoid pain during examination. But this will make the cavity a little bit open. You don't need to open very much, okay? Just go and look, any polyp, anything, and you're gonna go out, all right? So the stension of the uterine cavity is very much different than the stension of the pelvic cavity in laparoscopy. The distension medium is fluid, here is gas. Fluid is absorbed, gas is not absorbed. The number of pressure during laparoscopic surgery, you put the insufflator on 15, and then you don't look back again. You keep working for two, three hours. But in hysteroscopy, all the time, I am changing the flow and the pressure. If you are only doing office procedure, you don't need to buy my pump. No, just a... Uh, Gravity pressure is enough, all right? But if you want to do big surgery, septum, myoma, definitely you need to have a pump. About embolism, people misunderstand embolism. Embolism is an air embolism. That's the fatal one. There's nothing called fluid embolism, okay? An air embolism happened during big mistake. Sometimes people using this bottle, take care when you're working today, this bottle, to give the fluid. If the nurse is not watching the bottle and the bottle finished, 
when she changed by another one, there is air in the tubing. And then when the other one starts, it will push the air and this is fit. Two bottles. The one finished, the other one immediately starts. So there is no air in the tubing. All right. Did I answer your question? Sure. Your name is? You are a doctor here? Yeah. In this hospital? Yeah. That's why you are wearing batik and not so <laughs> yes, because I also have an, another an agenda okay, before this. <laughs> okay, thank you. My name is Ide Wusta Kastiawan. Uh, you can call me Ide. I'm also uh, work here for OBJWN. I'm new one, OBJWN in uh, Yogyakarta. Yes, uh, this very interesting uh, lecture. And uh, then I have two questions. You show me so so much uh, cases about the gynecology one, but about how about if it is it is used in the obstetric cases. Like uh, in the um, uh, ab abortions for 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 cases of obstetric cases, maybe something something like abortion, etc. Uh, what I'm going to show you is a surprise and still a new research. Yeah, yeah. New research. I will show you. Yeah, and also in the second. Second one is uh, when when will the the training in Indonesia be held? Yeah. Well, when I was giving a lecture like this in Philippines five years ago, it was attended by a senior lady doctor. She's the president of the society. She was so much impressed by my lecture, and she agreed that yes, his doctor should be for every gynecologist. So they changed the guidelines of the postgraduate in gynecology. And they put number one training, number one is histology. It is now considered as the replacement of using the vaginal spectrum in the office. Everybody should know how to look like this, okay? Same like urologists, same like ENT specialists. The ENT specialists, they don't now use the spectrum, they use by the scope. Let me show you something, uh, some surprise. <coughs> And uh, what you will see now is something very uh, innovative research. Can we switch? The view to my computer. Uh, we do embryoscopy for cases with uh, recurrent pregnancy loss. Much short video, you will see. And then, but this movie is only for uh, above 18 years old. Anybody younger than 18 years old should leave. <laughs> Decidua and who is this? Yes. You can see the transparent vertebrae, spinal cord. This is the miracle of life. Still budding limbs. 
transparent skull. You can see the brain material behind the skull. Open eyes, ears, fingers. And that's the transparent vertebrae. What is this? Umbilical cord and placenta. At that gestational age, around eight weeks, the bowels, the bowels, intestine, are outside the body. Outside the body. You'll see it now. This is the eyes, hands, fingers. And here are now forehead. So as I said, embryologically, the bowels are outside the body and then rotation into the abdominal cavity happen later. Sometimes it stay outside and cause congenital hernia. Look at this. These are the bowels. You see that? In a sac. And then later on it rotate and go inside. And it's quite obvious the genitalia of the baby, it's a baby male. And the final view, the face, it looks like E.T. Yeah, look at the face. I see many of you are taking photos for the video. So I always say in my lecture, if you want to take a photo, you have to pay. If you want to take a photo, you have to invite me for Starbucks, me and you alone. Uh. But for the gentlemen, for free. They don't have to pay. <laughs> the last one is another. Uh, there is one video. Why you disconnect? Why you disconnect? There's another impressive. Oh. Okay. This one is another. Look at this, a bigger baby. That's around 12 to 14 weeks. Look at the fingers. Look at the face. This is an older embryo than the previous one. You can see the umbilical cord the elbow, the shoulder, the fingers, one, two, three, four, five. He doesn't want to look at you. He doesn't want to see people because life inside the uterus is better. This is the miracle of life, could be future research to diagnose and treat fetal congenital anomalies. I think if I keep Professor. showing you things, I will not finish. I have a lot of material. Yes, ask me. Is it a life of embryo? One of them was not live, the first one. Yeah, because I, I'm, I'm thinking uh, you... Continuation you... of pregnancy. Yes, also, okay. and you have um, um, high pressure. Is it very gender, gender for? The fetal membrane is not one layer. The membranes yeah. are many layers. Okay? So when we go by the hysteroscope, we make a tunnel through the membranes, trap door entry. Okay? Okay, these are the membranes. One, two, this is the layer of membrane. So we go from this 
and then from this, and then from that. So when you go out, it will see. Actually, there is only one university in the world, in Austria, in Vienna. They started a research about embryoscopy for diagnosis of patients of repeated congenital anomalies. And we can take a biopsy from the fetus, right? So it is still a research. We cannot guarantee that it will uh, have a future or not, but we have to try now. Up till now, the, the few cases we have done on living fetus, they continued until full term. Okay, there is no interruption of pain. But we have to do it under anesthesia, right? We should be very much relaxed and we give to politics. And in recently now in Austria, they're using amnion glue. It's amnion. So after a bit, they put some substance which makes the amnion glue. And you know that the amnion is dynamic, it secretes back. Okay? So should we say uh, yes? Your name is? Uh, I think. This is the last question because we are very lack of time. Yeah, thank you. My I have to fly tonight to Jakarta, and they promised that we will go after the work to eat debek and. Uh... <laughs> My name is Ririel from Bethesda Hospital. Would you kindly show us uh, how the appearance of uh, uh, contour of uh, normal endometrium and then the hyperplasia, or maybe the uh, malignancy. Okay, I will answer a question in detail because I have a lecture called Atlas of Hystroscopy. It showed the normal, the hyperplastic, the secretory, and even the tubercle, tuberculosis. In the musical introduction, when I showed the panoramic view, this is the normal cavity. You are not here when I start with. Okay, this is the normal cavity. In the normal cavity, either we have a pinkish lining or some yellowish dots. These yellowish dots are the secretory glands, endometrial glands. So the more we come to secretory endometrium, this gland becomes more prominent. So we have a lot of yellowish spots inside, okay? The hyperplastic is the same like the case with the big polyp with RBCs. It, uh, endometrium is wavy and increased in thickness with increased congestion. The malignancy is unmistakable. You see, even if you're not expert, you see this is a malignancy. It's very, but malignancy is a, it's a polyp, malignant polyp or diffuse adenocarcinoma. Tuberculosis also has a view. So this is a long uh, lecture to show different views, but what I can assure you, if you go to YouTube, Osama Shawki and hyperplasia, secretory, tuberculosis, you have all the views, there are 3,000 videos, study them, and I'm open for uh, any communication with you. You send me on the messenger, or um, my email is very easy. You have seen my name, Osama Shawki. One word, Osama Shawki, one word, at yale.com. If you are confused with the spelling of my name, there is easy email. Look at, the, look at my eyes. <laughs> I love hystroscopy, okay? <laughs> I love hystroscopy at yahoo.com. You will find uh, me answering. I have two million followers up till now. I try to answer as much as possible quickly. And if I'm coming back in August, in August, I am now also discussing with some doctors in Bali. Uh, I did in many countries, you should be happy what I'm doing, this is good for your country. I did with many countries something called Hystroscopy Carnival Festival. So we did in India, Agra Hystroscopy Carnival. It's a kind of tourist uh, development. So we put the pictures of Bali and the beaches and some hystroscopy view. Visit Bali, swim into the uterus and enjoy diving hystroscopy, okay? So if we can do this, we can bring a lot of uh, tourists coming to Bali and you can also join. It will be three days hands-on thing. This is the way the world can be better. I have apple, you have orange. If I live away from you, I will never taste your uh, food. So I give you some of my experience, some of my skills. And what I can receive from you, you know what? Only love. That's what I want, okay? When I receive from people appreciation and love, this is what makes me. Yes, thank you, Prof. Osama. Um, actually, there is some of our colleagues that joined from the webinar, but we already asked them for is there any questions, but until now, there is no questions. And uh, thank you for our sponsors. There is a sponsor for from Interbat that make this uh, special lectures happen with uh, collaboration with uh,
Ogi Jogja and also Department of Obstetric and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, uh, Public Health and Nursing, uh, Gajamada University. And uh, uh, before, I think for this session is finished, but it's not finished yet actually. There is some um, uh, presentation from our sponsors, Interbat, so please, and uh, give uh, a high applause for Prof. Osama because he is deliver a very good lectures and I think it will be uh, 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 improve our knowledge and also our our mindset about uh, life. gynecology. About life, not gynecology. <laughs> life. Okay, about life. Thank you. Um, mohon maaf apabila ada kesalahan yang baik yang saya sampaikan uh, secara sengaja maupun tidak. Terima kasih sudah bergabung. Di sini, tapi jangan pergi dulu karena masih ada uh, uh, pesan dari sponsor kami yang mungkin tidak akan terlalu lama. Terima kasih. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Asama and Dr. Adi. So we move to the next session. This is the product presentations from PT Interbat by Dr. Intan Dianasari. Waktu dan tempat kami persilahkan. Uh, Selainnya belum nampak di depan. Oh ya, sebentar. Um, mohon maaf, nanti ini masih ada live surgery. Um, kemungkinan tadinya kalau misalnya uh, kita sudah berusaha untuk live surgery ke sini, tapi sepertinya akan sedikit kesulitan. Jadi itu akan uh, kita rekam dalam bentuk video dan apabila yang berkenan tadi di uh, Oka Permata Hati uh, Dr. Widat mengizinkan untuk beberapa SPOG yang berminat untuk melihat mengikuti live surgery di uh, Permata Hati. Jadi mungkin setelah makan siang kalau bisa. Asserman uh, syndrome. Kasusnya Asserman dan miom submukosa. Ya. Yeah. Terima kasih. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Terima kasih kepada uh, acara hari ini. Kami ucapkan terima kasih kepada seluruh panitia karena pada siang hari ini kami diperkenankan untuk menjadi sponsor dari acara pada siang hari ini. Uh, kami akan siang hari ini kami ingin mengita waktu bapak ibu dokter sekalian dan yaitu kami akan mempresentasikan produk yang mana kami akan mencoba mempresentasikan produk beberapa produk yaitu produk untuk peningkatan nafsu makan kemudian uh, ada probiotik yang kami miliki dan juga anti stretch smart uh, kami tidak akan mengita waktu banyak uh, kami hanya sedikit menyampaikan bahwa kami memiliki produk B12 bentuk aktif yaitu Cobasim yang mana uh, Cobasim ini